So what we're going to be covering today is um, obviously just some formula training resources where you can find out about how to actually uh, um, get some more information on what we're going to go through today. We're going to go through three basic sort of um, frequently used functions, uh, and then we're going to cover simple view, and then we'll leave the last 10 minutes or so for, for any questions. Um, of course, this is a, meant to be a short, quick session, and we're recording it, which we'll also make available uh, on our website afterwards. Um, so with that, let's, uh, let's hop right into it. So let's see, I'm in the wrong spot. Here we go. Okay, uh, so uh, can you see my Word document here? Yep. Perfect. So the first thing that I wanna cover is, um, obviously we have this simple answer to complaint document here with Woodpecker launched over on the side. Um, the first thing I'm gonna go through is just a couple of the support resources available if you haven't already seen them. So if we go over to our menu here, just going to quickly go through our chat functionality so you can uh, actually chat with us in real time for within Woodpecker itself. Uh, you can actually go to our learning center, our community, or our help center, all of which are going to take you to pages that look like this. And if you're on the learning center, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to the advanced section, which is then going to take you uh, to this page, where if you scroll down to the first one, it's going to have a whole how to use formulas and conditional section, which will be a good supplement to this, this training here. And then additionally, oh. if we were to go into the help center, uh, and type in formulas, for example, you're gonna get this page here about formula fields that has, again, instructions and tutorials and ex explanations for how formulas work. And finally, um, if we go to, uh, actually at the bottom here, there's a little formula field reference. This is gonna take you to another page that lays out the references for um, all of the syntax on how to use formulas um, and the operators you can use and the functions and all that good stuff here for, as examples. So all these resources are available to you. Um, and if you can't still find the answer to your question that way, a really good place to start is our community, um, which again can be accessed from the app or from our website. And you can actually ask the community any uh, question that you're having trouble with uh, in terms of setting up a formula or the best way to set something up. So uh, let's hop right into it. The first thing we're gonna go through is the upper function. So I have obviously a bunch of fields here set up already. Um, the first one is the state field, which you can tell is just a single line text field by this little ABC icon over here. And then what I've done is made another state capitalized field out of uh, that is a formula, which you can see there's a little X uh, squared icon over here. So if we pop into it, I'm just gonna click edit so we can see what it looks like. Um, we can see that here's state capitalized, our type, our field type is formula, and then our formula is actually just the upper function with state on the inside of it. So the way that we set this up, just to start from scratch, is when we click on the formula box, we're going to get a list of all of the fields that we've previously created in this template, as well as pretty much every Excel function that exists. Um, now, if you were to click on this learn more uh, icon here or, or link here, it's going to take you to that formula reference um, formula reference uh, sheet that I, uh, that I showed you or that formula reference page that I showed you that's on our website. Um, mm -hmm. So in case you get stuck while you're setting it up, you can actually use that little link there. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do, though, is I know buried in there, there's an upper function. So if I just type out upper like this in caps, I can then go and select the uh, field that I would like to uppercase. So if I click on state here, it's going to actually insert a reference to that state field. And I'm just going to close it with a closed bracket. And then um, optionally, I could specify a format here, but that doesn't really apply because the format uh, is going to be for dates or numbers. Obviously, we're just uppercasing a, a word here. So if I were to click save now, here's my new state capitalized. If I change my uh, state to, let's say, Delaware, you can see that it automatically capitalizes it for me in real time. Now, at this point, we would just insert this field whatever it, wherever it needed to go in the document, um, either using the plus button or using bulk insert. That's the first uh, simple function that we're gonna cover is upper. Um, the second one, which is a little bit more um, advanced and, uh, and definitely, um, definitely useful, is the parse date function. So in this case, I have a date field here, which of course is, uh, is just a regular date field. You can tell by the little uh, calendar icon over here on the right. If I click on it, I get my date picker, pretty simple. Now, let's say I wanted to actually show this date in a different spot in the document, the same date, but in a different format. This is a good use case for the formula field. So if I go over to the right of this, uh, the, the edit menu on this field that I've created, the formal date, mm -hmm. we can actually explore what this looks like. 
So again, we're just actually we're still using this formula input box with all of our fields that we've created as well as all of the functions. And the function that we want is this function called parse date. And what parse date does is it basically allows you to feed in any date uh, from any woodpecker date field and actually grab it so that you can then format it in a different format. So in this case, again, I just typed out parse date and then I selected that date field that we first created closed it up with a uh, parenthesis, and then for the format, I can choose what this newly uh, parsed date should be. So in this case, I just chose this format here, and once I save, you can see that now this is the exact same date as this one, this mm -hmm. July 2nd, let's change it to the 15th, and uh, now it says July 15th, but in a different format. So the, the, the use case for parsed date is to really show the same date in multiple locations um, in a different format. Now, the final one that I want to get to is the date add function. Um, so the date add function allows you to add a certain number of days, months, years, uh, or subtract a certain number of days, months, or years from an existing date. So again, I've already set it up with this date here. But if I pop into the edit menu here, I can see what this syntax looks like. Now again, um, if we click on here, we're going to get our, our fields plus all of our functions. We don't have to memorize the syntax for the functions because they're available at this learn more link, which again is going to take you to that reference page I just showed you. Um, and, but I happen to have obviously memorized the syntax of this, of this function. But let's just quickly walk through it. So basically, the idea is you type out your date add here, and then you're going to select the date that you want to add some number of days to. So in this case, it'll be that first date that we created. We're going to do a comma, type out 30 and this could be whatever number you want, another comma, and then we're gonna do days in quotes. Now, this days could be months, it could be years, this number, this 30 could be 30, 100, 1,000, whatever it is. It could also be negative, right? So if I did this, it would actually subtract 30 days from that, uh, that date object that we're referring to. Now, we also have the opportunity because the newly calculated value here is also going to be a date, we have the opportunity to specify a format. Again, I just chose the same date format that we had at the other uh, formula field, but it can be obviously any one of these. Now, since we're in the formats here, I do wanna just cover a couple of things. The, um, there's, there's other formats for numbers, of course. So if you were to be calculating some, you know, whether it's a, a share price or whether it's even just a raw number, um, you can define what numbers uh, that newly calculated value is, is rounded off to, right? So these are just integers, decimal mm -hmm. with one place, decimal with two places, et cetera, number with commas or currencies, both, in, uh, both using a, a period and comma or comma and period, uh, depending on your country. So this is a, this basic use of date add. So now again, if we click save here, we're gonna have our, uh, our formal, uh, excuse me, our, our date as our sort of anchor uh, field. And we're going to click on it and select, you know, July 30th. And you can see that now this date add field is 30 days after July 30th, which is August 29th. If we change this to, you know, July 3rd, this now says August 2nd. So whatever we choose for this anchor date, it's going to automatically add 30 days to that date in this field and it will be calculated as such. Now, again, we would do the same thing where we would insert this field wherever we want it to go. For example, maybe I want it to go here below the address line. I could just put my cursor somewhere, click on the plus button, and this newly calculated date is going to get automatically pulled in. If we wanted to adjust it, we would change our date here, and then we would go and click populate, and we're going to see that the newly calculated date is actually going to uh, get inserted in the proper location. Uh, any questions on that thus far? Um, no, well, so, because I'm brand new to Woodpecker, trying to understand it, so the date, the initial date that you have, the July 30th, 2020, um, how does it know to just go right next to date at the top of the paper? Good question. So, um, and this, by the way, this, this session we're doing here assumes that you've already seen some of the basic training sessions. Mm -hmm. So that's why some of this may not make sense. We do have those recorded on our website for you whenever you want to uh, want to view them. We also run mm -hmm. them live uh, multiple times a week. Um, but the, the good question. So the idea here is that ultimately this date field has been inserted uh, at the top here, just as I did with, with that newly calculated date field. So gotcha. for example, I could just put my cursor here and click on that plus button and it's gonna insert the date reference wherever my cursor was. 
Okay, got it. Um, so in the basic training and our in our demo, we do run through uh, mm -hmm. inserting fields into the document, either individually or in bulk using bulk insert. Okay. Um, okay. So so that's basics of of formulas here. One uh, other thing I do want to cover is you know if we ended up with um, uh, if we if we ended up with with dates that we wanted to reference in other fields, for example, um, any one of these three, right, could be date, formal date, date, add field. Um, since, since you're new here, let's, let's walk through even some basics of creating a field. So there's a, there's a little plus button here in the header of Woodpecker, and this is how we create a new field. So if I just click on this here, I'm actually going to name this, uh, you know, test, let's say. And for the type, the field type, this is where you would select, okay, where I want formula or I want single line text, whatever it needs to be. In this case, let's just leave it a single line text so we can show you, um, show you something uh, pretty clever here. So when we, when we create a field, it's going to get added to the bottom of our list here. But now, uh, since we have some time, I'm going to show you what, um, what we call a macro. So if we click on this uh, button over here on the right of a field, it says reference a field or clause. We can see that we basically have a list of all of our clauses. And again, we have a whole separate session on dealing with the clauses and the clause library. So we won't cover those right now. Um, but we do have a list of all of the existing fields we've created, very similar to, um, to uh, when we're creating a formula. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is I can actually reference any of these date fields that we just made, right? So I have that first one. I have the formula using parse date, I have the formula using date add. So if I wanted to, I could actually reference that newly calculated field in that date add field. And basically all it is, is it's just the name of the field surrounded by some curly brackets. So to get this to evaluate, we would just go and do the same thing that I just showed you here. If I make some room for ourselves and I just insert this field here, you can see that it's actually pulling in the value of date add uh, mm -hmm. whatever it is, date add field right here. So we call this a macro and it's really just a way of using or referencing um, different fields across uh, or fields that you've created across different fields that, so you don't have to type in the same information more than once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the final thing I want to cover here is, you know, when, we, when we're creating these formula fields using, you know, the upper uh, function or the parse date function here or the date add function, um, if we click into these, it's just going to give us a little error message saying that, well, we can't edit this uh, representation of the, of the field value because it's automatically calculated, right? So, you know, if I tried to edit this, it doesn't, it doesn't let me because we've already decided that this formula should calculate its own value. So what, what's, um, what's interesting is we might end up with a bunch of these formulas, these formula fields in, in our field list here. And if I'm sharing this with someone, that might be confusing that they can't actually edit them or it might sort of clutter up the, uh, the form here. So what we can do, and this is something that comes in handy when you have many formulas or many conditionals, is if we go over to the menu here, <clears throat> we're gonna go to settings and there's a setting called simple view. And simple view basically allows us to hide any fields that don't require user input uh, or are automatically calculated. So in that case, it's formula fields and conditionals and excluded fields. So if I were to turn simple view to on in this template, basically what you're going to see is now at the top, it says simple view, nine fields are hidden, but uh, all of those formula fields that we created are, are now, they're now not, not in view, right? They're gone. They're hidden. Mm -hmm. Um, they're still doing all the work for us, right? They're still doing all the calculations, but I don't actually have to worry about where they are. So for example, if I change my date here to, you know, August 1st and I click populate, we should see all of the dates in this document where um, we had formula fields being used uh, update, right? So these two, for example, uh, we're adding 30 days to this first one. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that they adjust in real time. So the idea is that simple view really allows you to abstract um, the, the whole uh, field list for either yourself or someone else that doesn't really need to know about what's going on underneath the hood.